Welcome. My name is Matt Wright, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is one of my favorite workshops. It's Be a Shark Career Workshop. So this workshop is primarily meant for physical science students, physics students, um, though there's some engineering students and chemistry students that this would also apply to. It's really meant for physics students. I spent a lot of time um, both in and out of academics. And uh, when I was out being a management consultant, I thought a lot about career development and how to navigate that part of one's career. And um, when I came back to academics and I became a professor, I said, hey, you know, I should really like make a, um, a talk on this. And so I've been giving various forms of this presentation uh, each year that I've been a professor. This is the first time I've tried to do it online. Um, I will note that there are a ton of shark memes throughout this presentation. I took them from the internet at large and I didn't, uh, I didn't make them right. So, um, you know, as this is a nonprofit talk, I, I hope that's okay. Um, and it's, it's all in jest, of course. So. Now, if we were giving this presentation to a group of people, this is the first time I've done this online, right? So when I give this in person, one of the things I like to do is I like to start by just getting the students to say the things that are on their mind. So I like to start by taking a quick pre-workshop survey and I ask the following questions. What is the best case scenario for your job search? What's the best case? What are you hoping to get? Then I ask the students, what is the most important part of the job search? What is the most important part? And then finally I ask, what kind of job are you looking for? So what's the best case scenario? What's the most important part of the job search? And what kind of job are you hoping to get when it's all said and done? Right. So take a moment and think those through. Best case scenario, most important part of the job search, and what type of job are you looking for? Okay. So let's get in this into the talk. Why sharks? They eat everything, right? They're not afraid to go into dangerous situations. They do it all the time, right? They always keep swimming. They never stop. They're always going, right? They are the big fish in the pond, right? So they're out there making things happen, right? And so that's kind of how we have to view ourselves when we're on the career search, right? So it's never uh, enough to be complacent. We don't want to say, oh my gosh, I got this one gig that's coming up possibly and I'm going to stop everything and wait to see if that works out. We got to be sharks. We always got to be on the move. We always got to be looking for the next big thing. And we can't hold back. Okay. So there are steps. There are steps to finding a solid job opportunity, right? And so I lay them out here, right? One thing to do is to write a simple resume, right? This thing doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just something to get started, right? I mean, ha grammar has to be perfect. You know, uh, you want people to look at it, take it to the career center at your university, have your best friend look at it. I always say, Find your girlfriend or your boyfriend's parents and have them look at it because, you know, they're already skeptical, right? So then the next step is to brainstorm your career ideas. Identify those careers that you're interested in, right? What would be good for you? What would be the best situation um, for your life? Then here's the most important part. Set up informational interviews. Network, network, network. 
get to know the people who do the thing that you want to do for a living, right? Get to know them. Find out what, in fact, they they do and make sure it's what you want to do. And then ask them, what's the secret sauce? How do I get to do what you do, right? And that'll help to move you into the direction of trying to get a really good career for you. After you talk to people, you want to assess what your own skill set is. What skills do you have? And then if there are skills that you know you need to get in the job that you learn through networking and the inter informational interviews, then you got to figure out how to get those skills before you can get that job. Right. Then you want to write your resume and your cover letter and you want to target them to the companies or the institutions that you want to work for. So you want to rewrite your resume and you want to write it in terms that they will understand. There's this great uh, email that I got from somebody a long time ago and I, I keep it on file and every now and then when a student comes in, I will uh, I'll bring it up and it's Leonardo da Vinci's resume. And um, what was really cool about it was it was all the things that he would do for the prince if the prince hired him. Like he would build um, you know, fortifications, he would design artwork, all these amazing things that he would do that the prince would want. Now, Leonardo da Vinci was going to do whatever Leonardo da Vinci wanted to do, right? But in his job application, in his resume, he wrote it in the perspective that the person on the other side, the person who is making that decision, the prince. What did the prince want to do? Who did he want to hire? Right. And so when we're thinking about writing our resume and our cover letter, we always want to put ourselves in the shoes of the person who's going to make the decision. And that's who we want to write our letter for. And of course, the interview. All right, how do we find a job? All right, so traditionally, you respond to an ad in the newspaper. Ooh, right? That was maybe when I was a kid, right? And, and now you kind of do it online, right? And it can be very successful. Certain things like graduate schools, um, faculty positions, right, have really nice job opportunities that you can apply to through the internet. Um, and there's a lot of really cool websites out there. But notice, I didn't put much stock to this. It, where on all the other slides, I've had shark memes. Here I have uh, Little Nemo, right? The guy from the Wimpy Kid books, right? Because while it's a good thing to look for jobs online, it can tell us a lot about opportunities that are there it's difficult to get in. It's difficult to make this work for you, right? So here's how you might do that. Let me bring over my web browser. So you might go into LinkedIn as a, a sorry, uh, indeed.com is a good site. You might type in physics. Right. And then because, you know, that's, I'm a physics major and that's what I do. And you'll see you get uh, Hempstead. It's a local college. They're looking for tutors, uh, more tutors, uh, freelance writers, tutors. And uh, here looks like a decent job. Right. You know, they're looking for some type of engineer. That's pretty cool. But what you're going to find is that if you do a search for physics, it's not going to work out. Now, if you go and you do searches for things like maybe skills you might have gotten while you are a physicist, then your your results are going to yield better choices. So here I chose MATLAB, which is a skill that I spend a lot of time working with my students to do. And you'll look, and now there's a whole bunch of jobs that are available. And now you can look for these. And, uh, and that brings you lots of really good uh, opportunities. So if you're going to search, search for your skills because physics 
isn't in a lot of job titles or search for something like engineering. Um, and that's going to yield the most amount of um, the most amount of search items. But I wouldn't dwell on this. I would do it to see what's out there. But then I would move into the networking phase almost immediately, right? So if you remember, I put, you know, the little wimpy kid and Finding Nemo for um, for my internet discussion because, or sorry, for that slide where we were looking online, um, simply because it's not it's not very effective, you know. So there's the Physics Today, Today Jobs, which is always a good site. Um, so Physics Today Job, uh, Physics Today Jobs, you can search here. Um, you know, this is a really good place to uh, do a, a uh, search. So, you know, they list, especially if you're looking for a job in academia, you'll see lots of nice academia positions here. Um, there's a lot of editing um, jobs as well. So there's a really, you know, there's a lot of really cool jobs that are listed on the Physics Today website. So that's also a good place to look. And again, you got to look and you got to apply. But like I tell students that when you apply to a job online without doing some networking, it's like you're hitting the delete key when you hit send, right? Because if they don't know to look at your resume, unless your resume is perfect, they're not going to look at it. Now there's a whole bunch of things that you can do in order to make sure that it is uh, it is read, but it's pretty difficult. Um, I try to not get into that business and really focus on the networking side because that's going to give us the best possible opportunity. All right, so the American Institute of Physics put out this. Uh, pamphlet. It's a book. It's a magazine. I don't know, it's come out in many different forms. It's called the Career Toolbox. It is amazing, right? So it's basically everything that I am going to talk to you about today, but in a step-by-step -step guide with beautiful uh, tables that you can fill in. It's easy to use. It's amazing. When I was a management consultant, I, I learned a lot of this career mumbo-jumbo and then I came and I became a physics professor. I said, you know what I'm going to do? As soon as I get back, I am going to create my own careers toolbox for physics students. And I started, right? You know, and as I was getting it through, I only made like one or two pages. Um, but I, I came across this careers toolbox and it just blew me away. It was everything that I would want in one source. And it was already done. Mind-blowingly wonderful. So I strongly encourage people to download this. You can just do a search for AIP Careers Toolbox and it'll come up. And if you do it with your physics professor, that can be a really good way to uh, see what's out there. There are a list of possible careers that uh, in that guide. I took a photo, uh, Photoshop here, um, image of one of the pages in there and it lists all of the physics career options that there are for physicists now people tend to think like oh my gosh i major in physics i got to be a physicist that's not true you can do lots of different things right you can be an engineer you can go into education you can go into it you can do research across all sciences there are an unlimited number of choices for physicists who go out into the world so don't be afraid to think big Physics is a hard discipline that teaches you how to solve difficult problems. People out there working in the world need people like you who can solve hard, difficult problems. So it's just about matching. And they need to find out how amazing you are. And you need to find out where they are, the people that are looking. Once you make that connection, you're going to be wanted. Um, all of these technically sounding jobs, I, I think if I asked you guys to like make a list of all the jobs that physicists would do, maybe like a junior or a senior in, in college, 
you, you probably would come up with a similar list. It might, might be a little bit different, but the ideas are there. I want to note that while all of these are great, it's not necessarily the expected careers that I find amazing. It's the unexpected careers. You know, like I have students who have gone off to be neuroscientists, who have gone on to be you know, biomedical engineers, and, you know, go off to do things that you wouldn't necessarily immediately think of as a physicist's career track. Um, and those are the things that I find, you know, really interesting. Um, so, you know, if you're majoring in physics or some type of engineering, there are so many possibilities that you can do because you know how to think and people need people on their teams that know how to think. So this, when you brainstorm, think big. All right. So, you know, look for connections at your university. So Adelphi, we have um, an industry board that of companies that we talk to, you know, and so you got to reach out to these uh, companies or people that already have connections with your university because those already kind of like, you know, some decision in some smoke filled room somewhere where everybody was sitting around smoking cigars and was like, hey, maybe my student can talk to your company, right? Now, that's not to say that we did that. I have not had any conversations with any of these people in smoke-filled rooms. That's just a joke. Um, what I found is that these people at these companies uh, reached out to Adelphi and vice versa, and we have a connection. So look to the people that are connected to your university and see how, um, see how you can learn more about what they're doing. And um, there's a lot of ways that this can happen, not just with the connections that your professors make, but you can also look at alumni. So maybe there was somebody who graduated from your department 10 years ago who's working at a local laser company. Well, reaching out to that person to talk to them could be a really big help for your career, right? And college students, listen to me. The people who are working out in the world, right, love, 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 with a capital L, capital O, capital V, capital E, love to receive the following phone message. Dear so-and-so. I ran across your profile on LinkedIn or Professor so-and-so said I should reach out to you. And I was just blown away that somebody from the University of X got a job working for a really cool laser company. As I think about what I'm going to do in 10 years, I would love to do what you do. Can we please meet over the phone for 10 minutes to talk about how I could get a job being a laser engineer? So that's what you might say in a letter that you would send to so-and-so person who is a laser engineer at the company. That's great. Good, right? Think about it, how the person at that company is going to receive that phone call. Hey. I was just like you. I'm just like you. I am going to your, your university. And you know what? You're my idol. I want to be like you, right? How can I be like you? Holy cow, that feels amazing. It's like, it's like a hug, right? You, it's, just, it's just a really amazing thing to, um, to hear from somebody. And, you know, it makes you want to help people to hear that. Now, not everybody. Some people are going to be like, yeah, man, I don't want to talk to them. Well, that's fine. You're not going to talk to them. But many, many, many people will get excited about your message and will want to talk to you. Okay. <sighs> One of the big problems is that a lot of the jobs that are posted online don't necessarily match the actual opportunities that are available, right? It's weird. 
Um, I've heard rumors where people post job opportunities to help their stock price. Um, you know, I've seen situations where people have posted a, a position that had already been taken. There are many, 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 many reasons why people post jobs online. You got to read them and you got to think about them and you got to apply to them. All those things are true, but you got to get the inside scoop from the company or the institution that is offering the job and to find out if it actually exists in the way that it's supposed to exist, right? Because you may be qualified, you may not be qualified for such a job, but the only way you're really going to know is if you chat with them. Because people ask for everything on their job descriptions, you know, what they're asking for on their, on their ads, it can be ridiculous. Okay. Be relentless. Keep reaching out to people. All right. So I, I say it's in jest because there, there's somebody out there, I'm sure, that's like freaking out. Like, I'm not doing enough. I, I mean, I'm just saying that, like, you got to be a shark. You got to be out there. You got to be making it happen. Or you got to be making the connections. Right. Be aggressive. It's better to be aggressive than to not be aggressive. All right. So there are ways to connect. Um, but here are some that are, you know, really set for the uh, students at my university at Adelphi. So we have an innovation center where uh, our university is connecting to other corporations. And so there's lots of it, connections. Uh, there's local conferences. Um, the electrical engineering conference in Long Island is great. A lot of the companies show up. And they demo a lot of the stuff that they sell. It's a really neat thing to go to, and you can make connections. You can go to a national meeting. Um, so the American Physical Society's March meeting happens in March, actually next week for me in September. It will have a giant vendor show. There will be companies from all over the country, all over the world there to show off their latest new gadgets. That's great because as an experimenter, I want to walk through, I want to find out what's the new newest state-of-the-art thing. But as a college student or as a graduate student who's looking for a job, this is your opportunity. Go forth and network. Tell these people you're a junior in college and you're looking for a job, right? Or you're looking for an internship. This is a great opportunity to network. Ask them the following question. How do I get to do what you do? I would love to get to sell these gadgets all day long. Um, physics today, one of the things I like to do is pick it up and I like to look through and I like to look at the ads, right? Each ad is a job process prospect. I added an extra D there. Please forgive me. Career fairs are great. And uh, AIP and SPS and APS, they all have a list of, um, you know, local members that you can reach out to. Um, but the conferences, the workshops, these are where I would really focus my situation. Where can I get a situation where I can sit down with an expert who's doing what I want to do and, uh, and chat with them. So uh, the second part of the internet discussion is just, you know, use tools like LinkedIn, right? So link in with your professors, right? And uh, your professors know people, right? That there are people who are, um, you know, in, in their contacts and you can go through and you can look through their contacts to try to make connections of people that that they know. So that can be a really, really big win is to use LinkedIn in your job search. So when you reach out to contact people, you don't have to be verbose. You don't need to say every possible thing you can think of. Keep it short. Dear Alice, I hope all is well. 
as you know, I've been looking for an internship for next summer. I noticed that you worked with Bob right from CSX. Do you think you would be willing to introduce me? Right? This doesn't have to be rocket science. You don't have to go on and on and on and show your resume and blah, blah, blah. It's enough to put it all in one short paragraph and send it. It has all the information there that I need. Keep it simple. You also may need to remind uh, the person you're talking to that you know you know them and where you know them from. Like, dear Alice, I hope all is well. We met last year at the APS March meeting, right? So that there's some context. But um, keep it simple, right? Once you're introduced. Here's so-and-so. My name is Matthew Wright. I'm currently a postdoctoral scholar and researcher in the physics department at Harvard University. I'm very interested in a career in blah, and I'm currently gathering more information about it. Would it be possible to speak on the phone for 15 minutes? I would like to learn more about what you do. Thank you, Matt Wright. I actually sent that letter. Yes, that letter was sent by me when I was a postdoc, right? And it worked. So copy and paste that into your email and fill it out and uh, send it out once you know the people that you want to talk to. Okay. Informational interviews. It's hard. It's scary. But you're a freaking shark. So you can do it. Ask them. Come in with a list of questions. Uh, be very professional. Ask your questions and listen. Really listen to what they have to say. That's it. All right, so what are the takeaway thoughts from this talk? Finding a good job is hard. You have to do a bunch of crap, but you got this because you're a shark. Okay, so... What I usually ask for the post-workshop survey are the two most important questions I feel. Uh, what was the most important part of the job search? And did you learn anything from this workshop? And, uh, you know, I give students a chance to hand that in. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me uh, at mwrite at adelphi.edu. I would love to hear your questions and your comments. Thank you.